はようございます。ブラドです。今日のトピックは拒絶理由の応答。はようございます。Welcome back. And today I want to talk about office action responses. And、uh, specifically, how to argue against the examiner's rejections. And today, I want to talk about teaching away. For 103 rejections, there are basically four types of responses you can make in,、uh, during prosecution.、Uh, if your case is on appeal, you may have some other options, but basically, these are the four responses you are going to use the most when you are traversing. Or when you're arguing against the examiner. So, first,、uh, not teaching all the features. So, basically, the examiner will cite、um, usually two or more references. They have a primary reference, which is the first one, and a secondary or more, and they will combine them and reject your claim. Now, if those references do not contain, do not disclose or teach all of the features of your claim, Then you can argue that, that、uh, basically the examiner does not understand the scope and content of the prior art. However, if the features are in the references, we've got three other arguments we can use.、Uh, first of which is unsatisfactory for intended purpose. This means that the combination of references, the way the examiner combines them, the primary reference is not satisfactory for its intended purpose. Uh, another one here is the primary reference, the principle of operation will change. So, for example, the primary reference is an AC device, alternating current device. The examiner combines that with a DC device and suggests to change the primary reference from an AC device to a DC device. Then that changes the principle of operation because the principle of operation is alternating current.、Uh, maybe the device will continue to work. However, it will be a DC device now, and the principle, which is it'll be working off direct current, will be changed. So that's change、uh, principle of operation. And I'm going to cover these in future videos, but today what I want to cover is、uh, teaching away. I have had a lot of requests to go over this specific type of argument. What is teach away? How can you use it? How do you find it、uh, in the references? And、um, so, teaching away is today's topic mainly. And I've listed the rules here. Teaching away is mentioned、uh, in several places in the MPEP and also in several uh, uh, federal cases. However,、um, in my opinion,、um, these rules here, MPEP 2141,、uh, 2144, 2145, are the good basic rules、uh, for the basis of, of、uh, teaching away. And then this、uh, 2013 case called Galderma Labs、uh, v. Tolmar. Here's 2141. Okay, so 2141.02. Now, I would suggest you rewind this video and watch it a few times and maybe copy down these rules or look in the MPEP yourself so you can study this.、Uh, I thought about explaining these rules or translating them into Japanese. I don't think it's a good idea I, because these rules are based from US court cases. They are written only in English. And in a very specific context. So, I would encourage you to understand the, the meaning of these rules in English itself and possibly read、uh, some of the case law as well. So, MPEP 2141.02, it says basically an examiner must consider teaching away disclosure. So, an examiner cannot only focus on. Part of the, a part of the reference that、uh, helps his or her argument and then ignore the teaching away sections. So、uh, that's the highlighted portion.、Uh, portions that would lead away from the claimed invention, teach away from the claimed invention. So here's, here's、uh, another rule 2144.05. Prima facie case of obviousness may also be rebutted by showing that the art in any material respect. Uh, in any way that is important,、uh, it teaches away from the claimed invention. 
and then also 2145 there. Uh, it is, and then this is this is basically how you how you can traverse the rejection. If you find the teaching away, you can apply 2145. It is improper to combine references where the references teach away from their combination. So that's the MPEP. So here's some case law, Galderma Labs 2013. This case is important for two reasons. Number one, it says what is a teaching away. And number two, it says what is not a teaching away. So first, a reference may be said to teach away when a person of ordinary skill, upon reading the reference, would be discouraged from following the path set out in the reference or would be led in a direction divergent from the path that was taken by the applicant. Teaching way is kind of leading the person of ordinary skill away. And then here, the second rule, what is not a teaching way, right? A second point here, a reference does not teach away, however, if it merely expresses a general preference for an alternative. I think the key word is preferably. That's just a preference. That's not a teaching away. Teaching away needs to be clear, and it needs to be clearly that your claim features or the prior art reference the examiner is using in combination is clearly should not be used. I encourage you to read this case to get more of a background and a context. And also, you can watch this video a few, a few times if you want to write these things down and take notes. It, I think it can be helpful to you. Okay, so we have the MPEP and the Galderma Labs case. All right, so let's look at an example. Uh, you may recognize this claim if you also watched the Gijitsu uh, Koka video I, that I did earlier. Uh, if you haven't seen that video, I'm going to put a link to it here so you can uh, so you can check out that video. Basically, in that other video, I, I uh, had a printer comprising a pair of rollers and a housing here and then I just I talked about adding this feature that was the point of that video so I would recommend watching that one as well so here we are uh, your invention claim one a printer comprising two things here a pair of rollers and a housing and the rollers are coated with a rubber coating okay rollers are coated with a rubber coating and so the prior art, so the examiner gives you a 103 rejection. He cites, he or she cites two prior art documents, D1 and D2. So D1 is a printer comprising a pair of rollers with no rubber coating. And D2 is an industrial conveyor. And industrial conveyor is basically, in this case, it would be a bunch of rollers just lined up as a conveyor using a plurality of rollers with some of the rollers being coated with rubber. So you have some of these, so so here you've got some of the rollers. So you have, if you have two, then you could say it's a pair uh, that are coated with a rubber coating. So that's, but this is not a printer. So this is typical in with 103 rejections. You'll have an examiner cite something that's very, the clo very close to the type of invention you have, uh, as in this case, they cite a printer reference. And then there's some feature missing. And then the second reference would be, could be uh, any other kind of device, you, mainly. It might be a printer, might not be. And it will have that additional feature, which in this case is the rubber coating. So here's a sample argument from, uh, from an office action. The examiner would say, reference D1 discloses all of the features of claim one except wherein the rollers are coated with a rubber coating. So that's um, that's basically what we talked about up here. So reference D1 discloses all the features of claim one except wherein the rollers are coated with a rubber coating. However, reference D2 teaches rollers coated in rubber, coated with rubber. And then they give the kind of standard statement, it would have been obvious to a person of ordinary skill in the art to coat the rollers of D1 and the printer D1 with the rubber coating taught in reference D2 
to arrive at claim one. All right, now for our teaching away, we look to the primary reference, which is reference D1, and we find something very interesting. D1 discloses, it should be noted that the rollers should never be covered or coated with any coating material. Never be, never be covered or coated with any coating material, and this is paragraph 50. So what is going on here in this examiner's argument? The examiner is saying it would have been obvious to one of ordinary skill in the art to coat the rollers of D1 with the rubber coating taught in reference D2. However, we have a counter argument to that, that D1 says, never cover or coat the rollers. Don't coat my rollers, don't cover them. All right, so therefore we have a teaching away argument because the reference itself, D1 is saying, don't coat these rollers, but the examiner is arguing to coat the rollers. So, so in that case, in this case, we have a good teaching away situation. So what do we do? Uh, in general, usually uh, we, we will be writing an instruction to the US attorney. If we are a, a Ben Nishi or a Japanese company, we will write the instructions to the US attorney. So that's pretty good because we don't, we don't need to draft the detailed argument. The US attorney can do that, but we can tell the US attorney that we have a teaching away. So here's some sample instructions here, and um, this is something you can use uh, yourself as well. So we would say, we disagree, this first paragraph here, we disagree with the examiner's 35 USC 103 rejection of claim one based on references D1 and D2. Specifically, reference D1 appears to teach away, teach away from its combination with D2. Because, you should always have because here, because Reference D1 discloses in paragraph 50, always give the citation. Uh, if you don't give the citation, your U.S. attorney has to spend time finding it, and then they're going to charge you more. So always give the citation. It's very helpful. So it teaches in paragraph 50 that it should be noted that the rollers should never be covered or coated with any coating material. All right, so there's a premise there. And then here we kind of we kind of explain why it's a good why it's a teaching away because reference D1 teaches that the roller should never be covered or coated with any coating material a person of ordinary skill in the art would not then modify reference D1 as the examiner suggests to coat the rollers of D1 with the rubber coating of reference D2 so what are we saying here we're saying, well, because D1 says don't coat these rollers, the examiner can now, cannot argue that you should coat those rollers, that you should put rubber on those rollers. You can't do that because the drafter of reference D1 says don't do it. It teaches away from it. So, and then here, the kind of action, what you want the U.S. attorney to do accordingly, please traverse. Traverse means argue against without amendment. Please traverse the USC 135 or 103, I'm sorry, the 35 USC 103 rejection of claim one on these grounds. And then you can mention, if you have dependent claims, you can throw that in there because uh, you don't want to confuse a US attorney with any, you know, if, if this is your independent claim and your the other dependent claims, if you don't have additional arguments, you should put something like this in here. The dependent claims are patentable, at least by their dependence from claim one. So that kind of completes the instruction. And so I'm gonna I'm gonna show it right here. Here's the full instruction. And if you want to pause the video to take a look at it or rewind it to go back through it, uh, I think this is something very useful for me in my practice. If I receive uh, an instruction like this from a, a Japanese client. 
it's it's really helpful to me to clearly understand what the client wants and how to argue it and it, it also saves time and cost on these cases okay so that's the example if there's something you want to go back over again or review uh, I, I uh, encourage you to uh, rewind the video and watch this portion again and go through it as many times as you want so in summary teaching away it must be explicit must be clear and it can't be an alternative it must be very clear do not do this do not modify this invention this way do not use this part do not coat the rollers with any coating or covering or rubber compound that's a clear teaching away it must lead away from the path of your invention your claims it should criticize it should criticize your claims or it should criticize that secondary reference the examiner used uh, to combine with the primary reference. Or it can discredit. Uh, discredit means that this technology was thought to be good but now it's not good so don't do it. And then finally, otherwise discourages investigation. So that means a person of ordinary skill would read the primary reference and after reading that, they wouldn't investigate to find that secondary reference about the rubber coating. Well, I hope these points could be helpful for you today. And I encourage you to watch this video a few different times, look into the MPEP, read the Galderma case, and then look for some teaching away arguments yourself. Good luck. Arigatou gozaimashita.